Thank you, Teresa. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, excellent. Well, it's really a pleasure to be able to be here with you all today. Um, I'm going to be presenting on a very recent publication from our lab entitled Biofeedback Video Game Balance Training in Individuals on the Autism Spectrum. So my lab is the uh, Wasteman Center Motor and Brain Development Lab. So here is a picture of our team. Um, the whole goal of our lab is to investigate both the causes and the consequences of motor challenges in individuals on the autism spectrum. And we use a number of different methodologies. So we use some brain imaging methodologies to try to better understand some of the neurobiological uh, potential causes of motor challenges in autism. And we also use a number of behavioral types of methodologies to try to better understand what are the motor challenges that are common in autism. And then also, do motor challenges in autism actually have uh, implications for daily living skills and daily life in this population? Okay, so we know that motor challenges are highly prevalent uh, in autism and that these challenges are frequently reported in things like hand speed, complex motor actions, and also balance and postural stability. So today I'm going to be really focusing on balance and postural stability, and in part because we think that balance and postural stability is very, very important for us to be able to engage with the world around us. So being able to safely play on a playground set, being able to um, stand at the stove to prepare dinner, um, these, uh, these skills really do require balance and postural stability. But when we're talking about balance and postural stability, we also have to be reminded that these skills change over the course of the lifespan for all of us. So when we're talking about development of balance, particularly in individuals in the, with autism, what we're finding from the literature is that balance appears to improve with age, but gaps between individuals with autism and individuals with typical development may actually widen with age. And to illustrate this, I'm gonna show you um, some work, a graph from Nancy Minshew and colleagues. And on this graph, on the x-axis at the bottom here, you're going to see age. And on the y-axis, you're gonna see better postural stability. And the top line you're going to see is the group without autism, and the bottom line is the group with autism. So what we see is that from about age five to 40, there are improvements in balance and postural stability. And there's, you know, a pretty, there's a, there's a gap there, but, and there's a group difference, but it's not as big as what we see after the age of 20. So it seems like this gap really is widening from about 20 to 40 years of age. And this is particularly concerning given the fact that past the age of 40, you know, into 60s, 70s, 80s, um, all of our balance tends to decline a little bit. And if the group with autism is starting out a little bit lower, that might make them more at risk um, to have falls in the future. And so the whole goal of this research project was to see what can we do to actually try to um, improve balance in this population? Can we actually try to prevent these uh, gaps that we're seeing and these group differences uh, you know, early in life, but also that might have cascading benefits later in life as well? And so we had two main research questions for this project. The first one was, can balance be improved in children and adolescents on the autism spectrum to really prevent this early plateau in balance skills? And the second question, which was both fun and also a little bit more challenging, was can we make this training fun and motivating? So uh, I don't know about you all, but when I exercise, I, I don't exercise unless I find it to be fun and motivating. I won't do something unless there's something else there to kind of motivate me along. And so it's great to have an intensive balance training, but if nobody does it, then why go and try to create it? We also know from the literature that individuals with autism are uh, much more likely to play video games and much more interested in video games than even same age peers with typical development. So what we thought about doing was actually seeing if we could create a video game that could hopefully uh, be kind of the, um, the uh, way that we administer our intensive balance training in this population. So we came up with our video game prototype, which is the Ninja Training video game and it uses a Wii balance board and also a Kinect camera so that participants can actually see themselves on the television screen doing these different balance poses. And we designed this game um, for uh, people with autism and we really try to pay attention to the sensory elements of it so not making it too flashy, no loud sounds or anything like that. Um, and then we also tried to uh, make it so that there was uh, very few verbal instructions and very little text so that it could be accessible uh, really to a lot of individuals across a diversity of verbal skills. 
So I'm going to give you a quick example of, uh, this is our introductory screen, and these are the six different poses that the participants uh, can choose to uh, engage in. I'm going to show you our Karate Kid one. And here's me, and this is what I see on the screen. Let me see if I can get this video started right here. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Okay, perfect. So uh, what there is is there's a shadow on the screen that tells the participant what pose to be in. And when they get into that pose, we are actually able to um, have the green light at the bottom to tell them that they're doing it correctly, and all the joint dot displays are yellow. But when you dip out of the pose, the dots that are outside of the pose will turn red to let you know immediately where you need to adjust. So that's kind of the biofeedback piece of this training. And what happens is the background slowly comes into play to try to reward the participants for engaging in this pose for as long as possible. So uh, for each of the poses, you can hold them anywhere from five seconds all the way to four minutes. So that's four minutes on one foot, and that's kind of where we try to get people uh, to be towards the end of the study. So this is a very intensive intervention that we're trying to do and trying to couch this in the video game format. So the data that we collect from this training game, um, we look at the amount of time that each person is able to balance within the shadow. Uh, so for here, I think I did 20 seconds. <laughs> um, and then we're also able to see on the Wii Balance Board what their postural stability looks like while they're trying to maintain these poses. And finally, we get the data from their joint positions to be able to see how their body is moving in space while they're uh, doing this training. So with this video game, we launched into a pretty rigorous training schedule. Uh, there is six weeks of the training, 18 sessions across the board, and that means that participants and their families were coming to our lab here at the Wasteman Center three times a week for six weeks, so a huge, huge commitment. In the first session, we do mo uh, standardized motor testing and IQ testing and also do a diagnostic confirmation. And then we also do balance testing outside of the game, so asking our participants to stand as still as possible on this board, and we record their movements. For the training, each session lasts 60 minutes, and it starts off with three to four of the ninja poses. And then we also found that early in the piloting um, that we needed something to kind of freshen things up a little bit, because standing on one foot or standing as still as possible for 60 minutes, not so fun, right? <laughs> so we added in some Wii Fit games, and we thought of these as kind of, you know, something that would be fun that may not actually help balance, but it, we knew it wouldn't hurt it, and we would create kind of more of a dynamic environment. Um, the participants usually take a halftime break, which includes typically a snack, um, and then we return to one to two of the Wii Fit games, and then three to four more of the Ninja Pose uh, games as well. On the last session, we once again return to the uh, balance testing to see what, if there's been any changes uh, over the course of the training and balance. So in this study, we had 29 children and adolescents on the autism spectrum participate, and these were between the ages of seven and 17, and the reason we did this is we wanted to see if we could target the age before the gaps widening. And um, all the participants were verbal without co-occurring intellectual disability, although we did have a very wide IQ range from 73 all the way to 135. Um, let me see. Oh, okay. So the very first question that we asked of our data set was, did participants show improvements in balance during our ninja training game? And very excitingly, we found that indeed, there were significant improvements during the training. And we looked across both two-footed poses and one-footed poses. And in our two-footed poses, as you can see here, what we found was a uh, 2.41 second increase in the pose for every time they came to the session and were able to hold that pose. They were able to hold it 2.41 seconds longer, which was really exciting. Because what that meant is that over the course of the entire training, there was almost a two-fold increase in their balance times. One-footed poses looked actually very similar. What we found, again, was that for every time they um, came to a new session and were able to hold the pose, um, they held the pose for 2.13 seconds longer. And then uh, over the course of all the training, that was, once again, almost a two-fold increase in the amount of time that they were able to hold their balanced poses. 
So it seems like they were able to get better at the balance training game, but a really big question was, did participants show improvements in balance outside of the game? So we know it's a very different thing to learn something from a video game or some type of computer training module, and then to actually go and apply it outside of the game. Um, and so uh, just as a reminder, we did do both before and after the training, our uh, postural stability measurements outside of the game. And we did this where they were standing as still as possible um, with their eyes opened for 60 seconds. And then we asked them to do it with their eyes closed for 60 seconds. And then with feedback where they could actually see where their balance is on the balance board. And what we found was that outside of the game, the progress that was made in the ninja poses was actually able to predict the post-training balance above and beyond their pre-training measurements. And that was really exciting. Um, we also, as I mentioned before, had brought in the Wii Fit games. And we wanted to see, we, we hypothesized that the Wii Fit games wouldn't be doing as much of the balance training, but we wanted to double check that and to test that. So we tested that, and what we found was that the Wii Fit training progress did not predict their post-training balance. Um, above and beyond pre-training balance. So it really seemed like the ninja pose games um, were what were the active ingredient in this particular training. So the next question we asked of our data is who benefited most from this training? So we know that there is a lot of diversity across the autism spectrum, and we wanted to um, be able to see uh, whether or not this training was better for some participants than others. And so what we found was that there were certain characteristics that were related to better training. Specifically, we found that if individuals were better at their balance at the start of the study, um, they oftentimes benefited more from the training. So they made more training-related gains. And in part, we think that this is because if you come into um, a very training-intensive you know, um, type of study you know, where you're looking at balance and you already start out pretty good, that makes you feel pretty good about yourself and about the training, and so you uh, are able to make more gains. We also found that individuals with fewer or less severe stereotype behaviors or fewer or less severe ritualistic behaviors tended to benefit more from this game as well. And in part, we think this is because with stereotype behaviors, some of these include body rocking, which can interfere with training progress. And in terms of the ritualistic behaviors, there were um, certain behaviors that we saw when running this training where um, a participant would want to uh, engage with the video game in a very specific way, uh, a way that they would do it at home. And sometimes we would have to redirect some of those behaviors to be able to engage in that balance training. Um, we also looked at characteristics not related to better training. And very excitingly, we found that verbal IQ really had um, very little relationship at all with whether or not a participant benefited from the training. And this is despite the very wide range of verbal abilities that we had in this study. This was exciting too because uh, we, we had designed the game to try to be accessible to uh, a number of individuals with different verbal skills. Okay, so finally, was the training perceived as beneficial and fun? And this was a big one. And I will say that at first we didn't ask the families this question, which was a terrible oversight. So we started midway through because families started providing us the feedback on this and we thought we should actually be collecting this as data. Uh, so we asked the participant um, when they were in the research lab on their last session a couple of questions about their um, benefit and enjoyment in the games. And then we also separately asked a family member or caregiver who attended the last session with them about the perceived enjoyment in the games. So the first question we asked was, do you think you or your child benefited from these games? And nine of the 11 participants and 11 of 11 family members thought that the participants benefited. And in the manuscript, we have the full list of the quotes that were provided to us on this, but I have selected just a couple that are representative. So one was, I became so tired and painful, but it helped me balance more. I mastered all of them. Can't wait to try it in sports like tennis or soccer. Um, one parent said, he hadn't played video games before. Now he operates a TV remote with increased dexterity. There's also less hesitation in trying new physical activities. And then finally, um, one participant said, very fun, got to meet a lot of people, made me think in a different way. And uh, it was kind of neat in um, the theme of meeting people as part of this video game. So meeting with the research staff to do this video game was um, a consistent theme throughout. So the next question we asked was, did you enjoy playing these games? So overall, how much do you think your child enjoyed playing these games of the parent? 
And 10 of 11 participants said they enjoyed the games, and the parents also related, uh, rated enjoyment as very high, so five out of a scale of six. Um, here's a couple of quotes. I liked Energy Ball and Hug the Tree, two of the ninja training games, um, and he enjoyed the games he played. However, he frequently complained about the graphics on the Wii. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that was a common theme as well. <laughs> Um, and then finally, the Wii games were fun, but the Ninja games could have been more enticing, which once again, it was the prototype, so we, yeah, <laughs> point taken, we agree. <laughs> and so um, finally, do you think you or your child would play these games outside of the study? And we found that 8 of 11 participants and 11 of 11 family members said that they would play the games outside the study. One said, play them anywhere. <laughs> um, and another uh, parent said, it would be a good activity over the winter. And then another participant said, would not play ninja games, but would play the Wii games, which is really good <laughs> feedback. Because <laughs> I think it's important to remember that the ninja games are very, very intensive, where we have participants by the end of the study trying to stand on one foot for four minutes at a time for 60 minutes. Okay, so the summary of findings. What we found was that visual-based biofeedback balance training does appear to improve balance and youth on the autism spectrum. And this is very exciting because in the literature, it was unclear whether or not we could actually change and improve balance in this population. And I think that for clinicians out there, you're saying, of course we can, right? <laughs> um, but the research literature sometimes takes a little bit to catch up. And here we're actually able to show that balance can be improved in this population. Um, we also found that those with better balance at the start of the game and fewer ritualistic and stereotype behaviors benefited most from the game. And this is not to say that those who had more severe ritualistic or repetitive behaviors and poor balance at the beginning of the study didn't benefit from the game. Um, it's just saying that maybe they might need a little bit more time or a little bit more length of training to be actually able to show the same amount of benefits as those who started out with better balance from the start of the study. Then finally, um, participants and their families generally felt the games were beneficial and enjoyable. So the implications of this study, um, we found once again that balance improvements are possible in children with autism. Um, we found that the ninja training games could be used to target balance challenges for individuals on the autism spectrum, which is pretty exciting. Originally, I kind of conceptualized this as more of like a solo training, something you might do in your living room alone, you know, when you have a spare 30 minutes or 60 minutes or so. Um, but from the feedback from the participants and their families, it seems that guided trainings might be the way to go. So how almost having a personal trainer uh, or people who are there to really encourage you along in these uh, balanced postures is uh, probably, um, yeah, just the most enjoyable and probably most beneficial way to do this type of training. So current and future directions. Currently, we are investigating whether playing this game can actually impact the brain and behavior of adolescents both with and without autism. And this is really exciting. We're um, actually almost done with the collecting data on this project, although we are looking for a couple more 13 to 17 year olds who might be interested in doing this. But we know that exercise and um, learning new motor skills can lead to structural changes in the brain. And it's one of the most robust ways to lead to these structural changes. So we're actually trying to find out what structural changes are being made. And then also, do these structural changes in the brain have any cascading effects on behavior in individuals, which um, is kind of exciting. I'm, I'm really excited to be able to look at that data. So we are also examining, and we're, we're actually hoping to launch this study very soon, examining whether minimally verbal children on the autism spectrum benefit from this training game, because we have tried to make it as verbally accessible as possible. So that's an exciting future direction that we're going in our lab this semester. And then we're also looking for strategic partnerships to try to improve the training games, graphics, <laughs> and interactive engagement. Um, I, I have learned so much about video gaming from this particular study, but it's really taught me that I have a lot farther to go and really need some strategic partners in trying to help us make it as enticing and engaging as possible. So I wanted to thank you all for your attention. I wanted to express my sincerest gratitude to the participants and the families, like I said, this was a very time-consuming study. So coming to visit our lab, driving to the Waitsman Center in storms and all those things three times a week for a whole period of six weeks. And this was a continuous six weeks. That was something that we asked of our families. And um, so I'm so grateful to everybody who made time in their incredibly busy schedules to help us out with this work. 
I'd like to thank the research team, the Motor and Brain Development Lab. Um, without them, this work would not be possible. And same with our amazing collaborators and the people in the groups who were um, able to help us fund this research. Um, I have also put our uh, lab website up there if you're curious about some of the other work that we're doing um, or other things about some of the motor challenges in autism. Uh, so please come and check us out or send us emails. And I have um, some of the research team here as well if you're interested in, in talking with them. So. Um, I would love to hear any comments or questions you might have. Thanks. I'll take a question down in front. Hello. I was uh, wondering, did you guys have any uh, control group with neurotypical children to see if uh, if the the gains made by the game was uh, was across both populations, and if and if the the gains are made were uh, being uh, starting off with better balance, if that if that transferred over to uh, neurotypical children, if if maybe the gains are purely uh, related to balance, being better generally. Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, thanks for that. So uh, we when we very first started this study and started the prototype of it to just see what might happen in this training, we had um, five typically developing children be our first participants in this, and their data aren't presented here. Um, but uh, we are collecting, we're trying to actually look at group comparisons to see if the balance training that we were seeing within our autism group is comparable to the balance training that is seen in a typically developing population. So we don't know the answer yet, but it, it's very likely that it could be quite similar. There's a, a question over there, and then we'll come back over here. Um, really cool study and uh, I guess timely for my situation. But um, anyways, um, I guess I was curious for families that are dealing with balance issues, is there a way or are you guys releasing the, the poses so families can kind of incorporate them into their own, I guess, routines? Because I've, I've actually been trying to do strength training with my son and kind of a something. Yeah, that's a really excellent question. Um, so uh, that's something that I would like to talk to indiv like to individual families about. So seeing if we can set up kind of a connect camera or we balance stuff, I would love for families to be able to test this out. This is why we developed it. Um, but we haven't actually, we've just, this is really hot off the press actually as of yesterday. <laughs> it came out. Um, so we haven't moved to that. But I would love to talk with you more about that or anybody who's interested. Some question over here. Hello. So... So there are some of us know that so uh, uh, the the workout game is called Kinetic, so uh, which is uh, developed by Nintendo Wii. Uh, nowadays, like do workout games like uh, Kinetic uh, would help individuals with autism uh, to improve their like whether it's like a co concentration, coordination, like um, attention, uh, mental wellness, and and their social skills nowadays, and as well as the posture too. Yeah, so if I'm understanding the question correctly, are you asking about the Wii Fit games or is it another Wii game? Yeah, so we didn't do the entire Wii Fit gaming system. There were selected games from the Wii Fit that we did here. And we did find that there was improvements in that in our participants with autism, but those improvements did not seem to generalize to balance outside of the game. Um, so I think in part, I can answer the question in saying that, yes, I think that people can improve from the Wii Fit games, but whether or not it's generalizable, it might not be intensive enough to be um, generalizable to outside the games. But that's still an empirical question, So, for, which means we're still trying to figure that out. Um, a question down Thanks. here, and then we'll take a question up there. Really interesting, thank you. Um, it's a question about methodology. Do the participants, I get the whole dot business, but do the participants get to see a duration do they get to see how long they're standing in the correct? Yes, thank okay. you for asking that. But they are able to see how long they're standing. So it ticks down the seconds, and then it'll pause if you're outside of the um, outside of the shadow. Okay, so it's only done digitally. It's not done. Okay. Correct. And so, um, and the participants help us set the goal for what the pose for that session will be, mm -hmm. and then so they know what the goal is, and then they are able to see uh, them achieve that goal in terms mm -hmm. of the digital numbers. I love the accessibility with the low verbiage, um, and maybe just uh, like a banner that fills out as a, in addition to the numbers, might make it even more accessible That's to some really individuals. That's a really great point. Yeah, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. 
Just a question in terms of the postural awareness that you're doing with the balance board. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools now are going to the TheraBalls for working on postural balance. Um, are you going to take that into consideration for the posturing and balance aspect because it's that TheraBall is so good for upper balance in kids with autism? Yeah, and to be honest, I'm not familiar with the TheraBall use and the protocol for how to use that, but um, if there are ways to try to improve balance in individuals with autism, that's definitely something that I want to learn more about. We don't have current plans to adapt that, but um, it sounds like a great thing to learn more about, so thanks for bringing that to my attention. Any other questions? Um, Madeline, right there. And then I think that would be our last question before we transition way too many questions, but um, the one that, well, number one, they, I think they just disconnected the Connect camera for purchase, so that's kind of sad. Um, yeah. <laughs> the uh, question I was going to ask is, did you use only visual reward for over time? Uh, I have a son who's very moved by audio stimulus for such things. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great question. So we used visual reward. Um, that's not to say that uh, you know, when we had the research staff in the room, there's a lot of encouragement that goes along with that. So there's, I think there's social reward and that comes with, you know, auditory rewards as well. But just directly from the video game piece, it was just visual. Thanks for your question. And yeah, we're still trying to figure out exactly, I mean, it's amazing how quickly these technologies become outdated <laughs> with the Wii Balance Board and also with the Kinect camera. Great. Thank you. I just as a reminder, all the presentations that we're giving